Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013 The Advanced Course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about linking tables from an ODBC connection to Access. So hopefully you've watched the previous videos and you've already done the import export of all the local tables in Access to SQL Server. You've set up the ODBC connection. Uh, on the computers and now you're ready to go to go ahead and connect access to those ODBC connections that you set up. Okay, so we're going to hop out here and we're going to go <clears throat> to where the actual database is located. Let me just close this window here. Okay, so I've got my Northwind database file. This is the ACCDB file that we've been working on. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and paste it so that I have uh, so I have a backup of it. Where to go? Try pasting. There we go. So I've got a backup of the Northwind database in case anything happens during this process. I'm going to go ahead and open up that Northwind database now. <clears throat> Close the login window here. And since I've got all of this, all of these tables exported over to SQL Server, I can go ahead and delete them from my Access database. So yes, I want to go ahead and click yes for all of these and get rid of them. So that may be a little scary for some of you to delete all of that information and that's why it's a good idea to make that backup before you do this process. But also don't worry because if you even forgot to do that your data is still here on the SQL server. It's all there so you're not going to lose anything. Okay so we've got uh, our SQL server all set up. We've deleted all those local tables. Now we just need to go ahead and connect to that ODBC connection that we set up in the last video and you just have to go up here to external data the external data tab and select ODBC database now in here there's an option to import the source data or to link to the data I think it should be fairly obvious to everybody that you want to link to the data source you don't want to re-import everything that you just exported to SQL Server. That wouldn't really make a heck of a lot of sense now, would it? So make sure you're linking to the data source by creating a linked table. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we can choose a file data source or a machine data source. I'm going to go ahead and select machine data source. And you can see there is that Northwind ODBC connection that we set up on this system. So there we go. Now I could select I could click on this new and you know that whole process of the last video where we set up the ODBC connection you could actually just do that from right here by clicking on the new and that'll open up the ODBC connection but I thought it was really important that you guys see how to set it up on the system directly especially because some of you may have to go through that 32-bit version option uh, so that's what uh, I, I definitely would recommend not doing the new button and just go ahead and use the computer uh, through the advanced, you know, the administrative tools instead. Okay, so we've got the Northwind ODBC connection selected here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll see here's a list of a lot of tables. There's system tables, there's schema tables, there's informational schema tables, all sorts of good stuff. But luckily, the schema that we're looking for is that DBO schema, so DBO dot. Okay, so I don't know if you remember this, but when we set up the um, the you know when we did the import export, we put this DBO in front of the table names, and this is where it definitely comes in handy to have that done, so we can separate out those tables from all these other system tables. Okay, so I'm going to select all of those tables that are on the SQL Server that I want to go ahead and import. None of the system tables. You don't need any of these. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK now. And, uh-oh, we have a little bit of a problem here. Don't worry, I anticipated it. I wanted this to happen so that I could show you this. If you get this pop-up message that says Select Unique Record Identifier, what that means is that you do not have a primary key established on the table. So if I look at the suppliers table on my SQL database, if I go to the design view, you'll see. So you can see ID does not have the primary key indicator. I'm going to go ahead and right click and set as primary key. <clears throat> And now that that is set as the primary key, I can go back here and I'm going to go ahead and select that field that I set up as the primary key and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it will proceed on like nothing happened. 
Okay, so there we go. There's all of our tables with the DBO underscore in front of them. Now, right now, they're named with that DBO underscore. So if I try to open up this database, like if I try to go into it right now <clears throat> and run it, everything looks fine, right? <laughs> no, I've got no records. Nothing is uh, is working. None of the data is being imported into the database. So I've got my link tables, right? So what's going wrong here? Well, because the naming of the table has a DBO underscore, access is a little bit confused. So let's go ahead and rename all of these and get rid of the DBO underscore and that will fix the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these. I'm gonna pause the video here while I do that so you guys don't have to watch me do it. It'd be kind of annoying to do so. Hold on for just a moment and uh, go ahead and pause the video yourself and go ahead and delete this DBO underscore from your own uh, from your own database that you're working on. All of our linked tables renamed DBO, so they're named just the same as they are named in the database here on, on, on SQL Server. So we're good there. Let me go ahead and exit out of this and save that table there. Okay, so everything is now set up. Hopefully, let's go ahead and exit out of the database and let's go ahead and reopen it. And hopefully, all of that data now is filled in. And sure enough, there we go. There's all of our different sales reps and vice president, etc., etc. Let's log in here and we can see, uh, yep, this looks good. The screen is filling in with all the data that we would need. Uh, if I click on a view inventory item, for example, there's all the data. So it looks really, really good. It looks like everything is all set up and ready to go. So there you go. That is how you go and add those that ODBC connection to those tables into your Access Database front end. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the, the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thank you so much.